Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development, where we share original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We hope you join us often for practitioner-oriented content around all things related to leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Please subscribe, leave a review, comment, share, and consider supporting the podcast on Patreon, even at the producer and sponsorship levels. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Roger Nairn about how and why companies should start and measure the ROI of their own podcast. Roger Nairn, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thanks so much, John. It is a pleasure to be with you. I'm super excited to have a fun conversation about podcasting on the podcast. We're getting meta today. And uh, you're joining us from the Vancouver area. I'm south of Salt Lake City in Utah. We're going to be talking about why companies should start podcasts, both podcasting to establish your brand and to establish yourself as a thought leader, those sorts of things. Um, and how you can measure the ROI of those podcasts, but also how you can utilize podcasting as an internal tool for your organization in terms of leadership and executive development and other such things. So this is what we're going to be exploring together today. As we get started, I wanted to share Roger's bio with everybody. Roger Nairn is a lateral thinker, problem solver, strategist, and finder of new ways. He believes in the power of the happy customer and spent years managing client relationships and building brands for world-famous agencies like DDB and Cassette. Throughout his career, he's found himself working with a number of industry giants, including, but certainly not limited to Netflix, Expedia, Walmart, Nordstrom's, Lamborghini, and Cineplex, Four Seasons Plus, and Vancouver's own Lululemon. On top of all of this, he followed his passions to become a board member for TEDx Vancouver and has recently become an expert level toddler wrangler through the magic of parenthood. When he's not at work, he likes to golf, read, and no surprise here, binge the occasional podcast. And that is fantastic. I love your background. I've been a long time consumer of podcasts for, for such a long time. And for me, it was the pandemic that launched me into podcasting. Mm -hmm. I've been a guest on podcasts going back even 10 years. Like I said, I've been listening to them for forever since their inception. Um, but once travel shut down and once I wasn't able to, to meet you know, like, like normally I'm, you know, I'm a professor, I'm a consultant, I, I travel, I go to conferences, I do consulting engagements, speaking engagements, I get to talk to cool people about interesting things. All of a sudden, a lot of that shut down. And I'm like, oh, maybe I should oh. just try my hand at a podcast. And so I started it. And it's just been this fun, organic kind of growth and adventure over the last two years. Uh, I know my story is a little bit different than other people. But but the bottom line is podcasting can be a great tool. And it can be a lot of fun. Um, so, so that's why I've gotten involved. Um, tell us anything else about yourself, your background, your personal context, uh, before we dive on into the conversation for today. Awesome. Yeah. So, so thanks for the intro. Uh, like you mentioned, I came from the advertising world. I, I spent uh, 20 plus years in client service working for some of the bigger agencies in North America, got to work with some incredible brands um, and, and absolutely loved it. But then I got into the sort of like, how can I meet really interesting, fascinating people? And, and I'm sure like yourself jumped into podcasts for that reason. And I started out as a, as a, as an amateur podcaster, I used it as my excuse to reach out to some of my favorite authors and directors and, and, and designers and, and, and it worked. I had the most incredible conversations with some of these people, but then I started getting the, you know, the business itch and, and, Teamed up with a couple uh, friends of mine, one who was in the um, journalism world, came from radio, the other who was uh, deep into the the technical side of podcasting. And we, <laughs> we went over beer one night and said, what if we combined our experiences and created essentially a podcast agency that services businesses, helps them get into the podcast space, 
And that's all we do is, 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 uh, is, is help companies get into the podcast space, grow an audience, um, and, and really create, you know, incredible audio content for them. And that's how Jar Audio was born. Uh, we started about five years ago off the side of our desks, literally threw a message onto LinkedIn. Uh, didn't even put it out publicly. I reached out to eight people on LinkedIn. I said, is this kind of business of any interest to you? The second person who responded that evening was somebody who uh, had a, their partner was uh, working for a company looking to start a podcast. He said, my wife, my wife would love it if you could be in the, in, in the office in, in a couple of days. We said, great. We were in that office. We signed a contract within 24 hours from that. And we literally have built the company since then, uh, just, just have, have, have rolled along. So, I mean, we, we get really excited because brands are always looking to create audiences. Brands are look, always looking to own audiences. You know, we're so tied into the, you know, the, the programmatic way of buying advertising and getting, you know, our message in front of the right people. It's, it's very much kind of a, a push medium. Um, it's, it's getting in, in the way of things. It's kind of annoying. Uh, it works, but it, you know, at the end of the day, you're, you're renting somebody else's audience. You're renting Facebook's audience. You're renting Google's audience. You know, podcasts allow you to own an audience, build an audience that knows you, trusts you, uh, has a lot of respect for you because you're delivering incredibly valuable content. So we work with brands to uncover who their audience is, what do they need, how can we deliver it, and how can it be in the form of a, of a podcast? And we've had a, a ton of success to date. Yeah, it's, I always love the origin stories of new businesses. And so that's <laughs> fun to hear. Um and for me, you know, it, it, I'm an amateur podcaster. It, it was totally just a side gig hobby kind of a thing. I never expected it to really, I, I just thought it'd be a fun thing to do. And, and it just kind of grew organically into something that's been, you know, uh, more and more meaningful to me and, and adding value to other people. So it's been fun to get into. Um, but yeah, the origin stories of any business, I think are always fun. And it's, it's fascinating, the, the work that you're doing. So why don't we, as we dive on into the conversation, lay out what the why behind why an organization might really consider um, starting their own podcast or podcasts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so again, it comes down to the audience. So if you have an audience that you're looking to, you know, engage with, there's really no better medium than a podcast these days. Um, and the numbers kind of prove it. Um, our podcasts see upwards of a 95, in some cases, 99% listen through rate. Uh, because it's engaging content, it's content designed to educate, entertain, you know, hit those emotional buttons. Um, but also just the medium is, is very intimate. It's literally in your audience's ears. And so if you build a podcast that respects the listener and is really built to help them um, or serve them in any fashion, uh, you, you know, you can be really successful. At the end of the day, it can't be an advertisement. Nobody's going to listen to a 20 or 30 minute ad from American Express, all about American Express, but they would listen if, you're, if they're, you know, let's say a small business owner, they would listen to a podcast about helping small businesses, you know, thrive and succeed. So maybe they'll listen to an episode on cash flow management, or they'll listen to an episode on building a brand, or they'll listen to an episode on, you know, making sure you're, aware of and, 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 and um, managing your, your diversity, equity, and inclusion, you know, uh, 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 challenges within the organization. So that's, that's high value. It just happens to be brought to you by, uh, by a brand. And so we get hired by these companies to come in, really dig into the strategy side of, of why the podcast needs to exist, what its purpose is, and what it's going to do for the, for the listener. And then we build from there. So we have teams of uh, producers and audio technicians. Uh, we've got teams of marketers who craft and create, you know, really high, high value podcasts that, uh, that get pushed out to the right, uh, to the right ears. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. I what goes into creating that successful podcast? Because I mean, there are so many platforms out there. It's much easier to do. The barrier to entry is super low. I mean, it's almost mm -hmm. non-existent, right? You, you you spend 50 bucks, get some decent equipment. Yep. Um, you can join various platforms, many of which are free. Um, mm -hmm. Editing software, you know, you can find expensive stuff, but also free stuff. Mm -hmm. Like the barrier to entry is super low, but obviously, I mean, there's something, you, you, I'm sure you could tell me, but it, aren't there like literally millions of active podcasts as we speak with mm -hmm. more launching every day. So clearly, yeah, there's, oh, go ahead. 
I was going to say, yeah, there's, there's 2 million active podcasts right now. Um, so you need to stand out from the, from the crowd. And, and the way to yeah. do that is with, is with high quality, thoughtful storytelling, great editing, the right host and the right guests. And so that's what we do. We, we, we're, we, we I, I call ourselves a, a do it for you agency. We, you know, we, we are hired by companies to, to handle every you know, aspect of it um, in full collaboration. You know, we're not just a, an Island and, and then we, kind of say, ta-da, here's a podcast. It's very much a collaborative process. So we're working with marketing teams and uh, communication groups within the, within the company to produce, you know, something great. And so we, uh, yeah, so we come in, we do all the strategy side of it. Uh, you know, a lot of the heavy lifting comes in things like finding the right host, contracting the right host, you know, producing a season arc, sort of what, you know, what 12 episodes is going to be like, how do, how does the story either tie together or how are the, bits and pieces of each episode laddering up to the the larger sort of brand values of the organization. Uh, we're writing scripts, we're finding guests, we're contracting guests, we're making sure guests are pre-interviewed. We do we do pre-interviews with all of our guests to make sure that we can pull out the nuggets that we want the host to be asking because we don't script anything as far as you know our 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 conversations. We have we have um interview notes or what we would call a question line going into an interview, but otherwise it's, it's fully organic and we want, we want it to be that way, but we, we, you know, we do want to advise our, our host on sort of like, what are some opportunities that you really want to kind of poke into make sure you don't miss. Also though, sometimes when we're pre-interviewing a guest, we're determining, is this going to be a dud conversation? And if so, let's maybe cut this one off or maybe you know say 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 no thank you this time around um we don't want to waste anybody's time uh including our clients and so we're doing you know everything from the go you know the guest bits up front we're obviously doing all the recording we do all of our recording remotely um globally uh, we ship equipment all around the world like you mentioned you know equipment is a is a fairly fairly low barrier to entry so we'll actually ship equipment to all of our guests to make sure that they have the best quality We'll work with them to figure out where in their home or office we can get the best quality as well. You know, we've done everything from finding a corner in a closet to making a little bit of a pillow fort. You know, we, 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 we get it all done. We, we find that we don't need studios as much as we used to. We're trying to find, you know, kind of uh, organic ways to, you know, to um, flow in sort of what we would call texture audio you know maybe we're doing some streeters with some people on the street asking their opinion on something or maybe we're um you know getting our hosts to walk around day in life with their cell phone and recording themselves and so we're, we're capturing other audio all the time and then we're doing the full edit full uh you know full music bed custom music if we need to um and then you know, getting it online, distributing it and making sure it's getting to the right audience. Um, but also we, we have a full marketing team whose, whose role it is to um, constantly be pushing on a, a number of different areas to, to try to get the podcast to, to the right audience uh, to as many of them as possible. Check out my new book, The Future Leader, creating and transforming next-gen organizations. Stemming from two decades of professional experience and over 600 in-depth interviews with executives, thought leaders, and scholars from across the globe, The Future Leader will help you explore the ordinary, everyday actions that will help you to prepare to lead in the future of work, to respond to an uncertain future, and to produce extraordinary results for individuals, teams, and organizations. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Academy, courses, micro-credentials, and certificates to upskill and reskill for the future of work. All HCI Academy courses, micro-credentials, and certificates are designed, developed, and delivered by award-winning and internationally renowned scholars, educators, thought leaders, executives, and practitioners. Our courses, micro-credentials, and certificates will help you make your mark on the future of work and make an immediate impact in your organizations. Check out the HCI Academy and our many course offerings and certificates to upskill and reskill for the future of work. Check out our new weekly 
LinkedIn newsletter, Alchemizing Human Capital, exploring industry trends via original research and interviews with executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We look forward to having you join us. And let's talk about ROI. So, Mm -hmm. You know, we, we want to do things that make sense. Uh, everything's uh, give and take and there's opportunity costs. So if you're spending time and money and budget um, on developing a podcast and trying to advertise and get it out there and, and expand your reach and create your, your brand loyalty and all those things that you were just talking about, clearly that's going to take effort and time and energy and money. Um, how do you know that that's worth it? Now, there are a lot of listener analytics and, and those sorts of things. You can do traditional marketing analytics and such. Why don't you walk through that with us for just a minute? Some of the types of things that um, we should be looking at and measuring, maybe those things that really matter versus some things that don't matter as much, though people tend to focus too much on. Yeah. And I, and I think just in, you know, a classic sort of X ad guys answer to is it depends. It depends on the organization. It depends on what the objectives are of, of the podcast, but uh, on its basic level, you know, the technology is similar to when you post a blog post on a on a website. You're able to see the analytics behind how many people visited it, read it, you know, all that sort of stuff. Similar to a podcast, we can see how many downloads or streams we had of of the show. We're able to see how long people listened for. We're able to see where they dropped off, where they skipped. That's all really valuable information for us because uh, it helps inform future episodes, different creative decisions we make. But then when it comes to like that side of it, I mean, yes, of course you want a big audience. Everyone does. Uh, you're never going to be like a Joe Rogan or, a, you know, Tim Ferriss. Uh, it's just not going to happen, especially coming from, from a brand. Uh, but you want to see the numbers going up. You want to see a, a you know, bigger number than it was last month, but there's other pieces that we really look at. So for example, the engagement rate, how long are people listening for? That's that to us is, is a real indicator of, of success. And it is for our clients as well. But then when it comes to like business, you know, the business ROI of it, again, it depends, but if you want to measure, you know, visits to the website, for example, we can do that using technology. We can track conversions uh, all the way from, we, you know, we can tell who listened to the podcast. Did they go on the website? Did they make a purchase? Did they download a form? Did they do X, Y, and Z? We can, we can measure all that. We can't tell who the specific individual is, but we can tell, you know, kind of tra- by tracking IP addresses, um, uh, you know, th- that we're seeing those numbers. Um, and then, it, it, you know, we've, we've had a lot of clients look at it from like a brand standpoint. So I'll give you a perfect example. We did a podcast for Expedia called Out Travel the System. And they came to us with a, with a brand challenge, which was we want to be known as a more helpful brand. We want the podcast to help us do that. And so what we did was ran a... Uh, a, a brand lift study. Um, we pulsed it a few times throughout the course of the season. And one of the questions was, you know, do you see Expedia as a helpful brand? Did, did the podcast help you get there? Sort of thing. I can't remember the exact uh, question, but that to them, you know, proved the ROI of the podcast. Um, we've done a lot of work with internal podcasts where, you know, it's really about, you know, engagement with, with staff. Um, how many are listening? How long are they listening? They'll do, you know, their um, their weekly standups, and they'll they'll even ask like questions that were from the podcast to sort of prove that they listened and make sure that the message, you know, the message is getting through. Um, that's a, that's another example. So it totally depends, but kind of everything and anything is possible, and we're only limited by technology and our creativity. Yeah, that was a great overview. Like you said, there's there's so much great data available. Um, let's, let's have clear objectives on the forefront, you know, so we, we know what we're looking for right. <clears throat> and then we can put together, uh, an assessment strategy to mm-hmm. understand the impact in relation to those objectives. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's important in any aspect of business, any, anything that we're choosing to spend our time on. Certainly that would be the case for, uh, podcasting. And so let's be thoughtful about it. Um, it's, it's really a great opportunity though, a great resource, for organizations. It's definitely Mm -hmm. something I've really enjoyed doing and would highly recommend others giving it a try. Um, You also mentioned, you just uh, for a moment talked about internal use podcasts. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could just take a few more minutes to talk about that and how those are utilized because that's becoming more and more popular where you're not creating a podcast for the general public or for your consumers. 
your, your general consumer base, but it's really just for the internal usage as a training tool, as a, an executive development tool. Um, how have you seen some of your customers utilize it that way? Yeah, so, so pre-pandemic, we saw customers using it for the purposes of expanding messages on a global basis. Um, but then once... Once COVID hit, it just really took off beyond that because you now have you you now had a more mobile workforce. You had people working from home, um, disconnected from that sort of you know office uh, uh, town hall sort of opportunity. And so the podcast became a really great way to broadcast um, you, you know a range of messages. We've had clients do everything from you know. Okay, so Lululemon is a is a is a big you know retail brand. They're based in Vancouver, but they've got staff globally. You know, it's a culture before COVID. It was, it's a culture where the head office was really important to culture, but a lot of their staff felt disconnected from head office, and they would do these um, monthly sort of leadership uh, events where they would bring in a really famous author or they'd bring in a yoga master or somebody who has got a really incredible story to tell, they'd bring them up on stage. They they'd interview them. It was kind of like a Ted talks sort of style. Well, what we did was we recorded everything on stage, but then we put it into a podcast format. We had our hosts kind of give a little bit of extra color commentary to what went on a stage. And then we posted it on their intranet and it got pushed out globally. We had uh, different, you know, different language translations and, and, and things like that. So the staff globally felt like they were actually there. They could listen to it on the treadmill, you know, before work, brushing their teeth uh, before work or driving in the car or, you know, commuting into work or listening at work, you know, uh, and we're, we're under no illusions that you could also do the same thing with video, but um, they felt like the audience or the, the staff a lot more tuned into to podcast. They love that sort of freedom of being able to do it anywhere. You can't get that with video. You can't, watch a video on a treadmill without throwing up <laughs> or, you know, nobody's really watching videos while walking their dog. Um, so this gave them just a little bit more freedom. And so the, the you know, the, the, the sky's the limits on what can be done. We've had, we've had brands roll out sort of new brand strategy, new, you know, new values and mission and all that sort of stuff. And we, and they've articulated it into a podcast um, broadcast it. Uh, they've got a lot of like, on the ground retail employees as well. We posted QR codes in their break rooms so they could just quickly scan and listen right on the spot. We've had banks do the same thing. Um, they've, they've, they've obviously got huge onboarding programs and part of the onboarding was, you know, listen to the podcast. Uh, we can track who's listening just for sort of um, HR purposes and things like that. Um, and, and so, yeah, there's, there's a ton of different things that, that, uh, that can be done. And let's be honest, like, you know, you can also send in an email to your entire staff, but there's really not a lot of emotion in that. We're so kind of tired of the CEO message. And this is coming from CEO. Uh, there's, we're so kind of tired of the, you know, boring sort of flat CEO message, you know, put the CEO in audio and tell some stories and add some real incredible, um, you know, uh, um, uh, texture to the, to the episode. And that's where you're going to see the engagement. It's an underutilized tool that more and more people are adopting. Again, barrier to entry, super low. Give it a try. Um, and and I, think, I think you'll find it to be really rewarding and fun and, and a, a great way to expand what you're doing. Well, Roger, it has been a real pleasure. I note the time. I have to let you go here in just a minute. Before we wrap for today, I just wanted to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can connect with you, find out more about your work and your team, and then give us a final word on the topic for today. For sure. Yeah. Check us out at jaraudio.com. Um, we've got all sorts of great resources on the podcast industry, podcasts for brands and organizations. So check out, check out our blog as well. Uh, you can also see us on, on LinkedIn and myself personally, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, I'm also on Twitter, but that's where I do most of my, you know, kind of uh, uh, complaining about being a father and, and toddler world and uh, so not as, as useful, but we're also on, to, on Twitter. Um, but ultimately, you know, listen to more podcasts. It helps raise the boats um, as, a, as a whole. And there's a ton of amazing work out there. Awesome. Thank you, Roger. It's been a real pleasure. I encourage listeners to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Roger and his team can do for you. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week.
Bluer Than Indigo Leadership, The Journey of Becoming a Truly Remarkable Leader. Early in my adult life, I learned about an Asian proverb that translates as bluer than indigo. If you think about the color indigo, it is a brilliant, deep, and vibrant blue, what some would call the bluest of blues. To have something that is bluer than indigo is rare and truly remarkable. Contrary to popular myth, there is no one-size-fits-all or cookie-cutter approach to effective leadership. There is no silver bullet, no secret sauce, no go-to model that will solve all of your problems. The truth is, great leaders have all had their unique strengths and flaws, and have all had to discover and then pave their own distinctive path in their life's journey to fulfill their leadership potential. Bluer Than Indigo Leadership will help you discover your own path and explore those ordinary, everyday actions that will help you respond to an uncertain future and produce extraordinary results for your individuals, teams, and organizations. Check out Human Capital Innovations magazine, Human Capital Leadership. Human Capital Leadership is a free, interactive e-magazine with the mission to help individuals, leaders, and organizations find innovative approaches to maximize their human capital potential. We publish issues quarterly in August, November, February, and May. Take a look at the latest issue and let us know what you think. alchemy of truly remarkable leadership, ordinary everyday actions that produce extraordinary results. Consider how the nature of work has shifted over the past 50 years with increased globalization, rapid technological advancement, and the shift in economic composition. The average job of today looks very different than the average job of 50 years ago. What will the jobs and organizations of tomorrow look like? Moreover, what does this all mean for organizational leaders? What are the core competencies and capabilities of organizations and their leadership that are prepared for continued disruption and geopolitical and socioeconomic shifts? Regardless of what the future holds, increasingly, leaders need to be socially minded, data driven, decisive, champions of talent, and disruptors of the traditional notions of leadership, teams, organizations, and work. The alchemy of truly remarkable leadership will help you to explore your own leadership competencies and capabilities and consider ways to apply and implement them into your workplace and personal life. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations podcast? Please subscribe, leave a review, comment, share, and consider supporting the podcast on Patreon even at the producer and sponsorship levels. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.